We investigate the mysterious circumstances surrounding the death of guitar legend Randy Rhodes. He was not going to sit there and watch this thing happen if he could do something about it. Then, the country diva battle for How Do I Live? And finally, what is the most mysterious song on the internet? It's like a cult that's formed around this song. Randy Rhodes. The name is synonymous with heavy metal greatness. There have been few musicians who have left such a lasting mark on their genre in so short a time. Amazing guitar player. So iconic, so powerful. Extremely melodic. He had this sort of classical influence to his playing. Polka dots on his guitar, the Jackson flying bees. Every note he played seemed perfect. As Ozzy Osbourne's sidekick, he stormed the music world with intricate guitar riffs, quickly becoming one of the top guitarists in the world. But his meteoric rise is cut short by a horrible accident, still shrouded in doubt. Randy Rose was killed instantly when his single-engine aircraft cartwheeled after striking the tour bus that in fact had Ozzy on board. It was such a tragic day. And, you know, there's a lot of different theories. Crank, accident, attempted murder, attempted suicide. What happened in that plane? What happened to Randy? The legend of Randy Rhodes begins at home. His mother, Dolores, is a musician and encourages Randy to do the thing. But it's a twist of fate that gets a six string in his hand for the first time. He picked up the guitar when he was six. My mom had a closet all full of stuff, you know, and he hit something in the closet and the guitar crashed down and it kind of like just appeared in front of him. So he said, all right, I guess I better learn how to play this thing. His mom is the one that opened up the music school, Musonia, in North Hollywood. So he spent a lot of time at his mom's music school. He was taking lessons up until 14, 15, and his teacher said, I've got nothing left to teach him. He's amazing. He could start teaching here. One time my mom said to Randy, you know, Randy, you've got a God-given talent. And he just started crying like just tears, because he knew if my mom said it, it must really mean something. Randy decides to take all his training to the stage and forms Quiet Riot when he's just 17 years old. Soon, along with Van Halen, they're one of LA's best club acts. When I played with Randy Roth in Quiet Riot, what he did was outstanding. He was like, wow, this is amazing. He was focused on being an amazing musician. But Quiet Riot was more of an opening band. They were rarely the headliner. By 1979, it was pretty much... up after rehearsal he goes yeah i gotta go over to uh the studio and uh, and play for this guy ozzy Osbourne." he didn't want to go and my mom is the one that said you need to go so randy goes audition up and literally randy was tuning up and ozzy said by god you're the greatest guitar player i've ever seen you got the job as much as Randy needs a break in his career, Ozzy needs something too. After leaving Black Sabbath in 1979, the legendary madman finds himself at a career crossroads. Most critics thought Ozzy was done. Ozzy was struggling with abuse issues, and Randy was essentially a clean and sober kid who wanted to play guitar all the time. You know, someone like Randy who was a studious, disciplined musician that established a blueprint really for the rest of Ozzy's entire solo career. The chemistry is instantaneous and evident from the opening chords of their first single together from the 1980 debut album Blizzard of Oz, the heavy metal standard Crazy Train. <laughs> That guitar sound you hear on Crazy Train, which is so connected with Ozzy, 
That's Randy. Black Sabbath was sort of a dark, heavy metal band. Now Ozzy found himself with songs on mainstream rock radio. In some ways, his success with Randy was surpassing anything he'd had with Sabbath. The success of Crazy Train brings the album, Blizzard of Oz, to number 21 on the charts. They follow it up with Diary of a Madman, another wildly successful album. The band is headlining massive arena shows. Despite the success, Straight Laced Rhodes is struggling with Ozzy and his personal demons. Yeah, Randy really, really loved Ozzy, and Ozzy loved Randy. Yeah, but it bothered Randy that he drank so much. Right before Randy passed, he actually told Ozzy, you know, you're going to kill yourself one day. That would be the last conversation the two men have. After a concert on March 18th, 1982, bus driver Andy Acock drives straight through the night to an unscheduled pit stop in Florida. They arrive the next morning at a ranch, which also has a single-engine airplane. Acock, who has a suspended pilot's license, offers to take the band members up for a joyride. The idea was to really annoy everybody that was sleeping inside, which included Ozzy Osbourne. And so they start with trying to prank the tour bus. Acock flies the plane erratically buzzing the tour bus full of sleeping band members several times before landing. He then offers to take a second group on board. I hear Randy going, Roots, Roots, Andy's going to take us uh, on, a, on a plane and it's going to fly us around. You want to come? I said, no, nah, that's all right. I'll see you when we get to the hotel. And that was the last time I saw Randy. What's interesting about the second flight is they had also taken a makeup artist with them who had a heart condition. So they were pretty much assured, no, I'm not going to do anything weird this time because I know what she's dealing with. And so that was part of the reason Randy went up. Randy really was afraid of flying. And the fact that he got on that plane completely, to this day, blows the minds of his best friends. He said, okay, I'm afraid to fly, but if you're going to take it easy, I just want to get some pictures for my mom. And I wake up to... Boom! Sharon and Ozzy are coming out of the back lounge and I look to the right and the window's blowing up. And there's Jake Duncan, our tour manager, on his knees and he's pulling his hair and going, they're gone, they're gone. And that's, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at fire, house on fire with people that I love in there. And it's like, there's nothing you can do about it. Coming up, questions surround Randy Rhodes' final moments. Was it a prank gone horribly wrong? Or does the pilot have a more sinister motive? And did Randy Rhodes sacrifice his own life for his bandmates? I a thousand percent believe that Randy Rhodes saved everybody's life on that tour bus. On March 19, 1982, Ozzy Osbourne's 25-year-old guitarist is killed in a plane crash. But the circumstances bring into question another possibility in the tragedy. The pilot's estranged wife was on the bus, and Andrew seemed irritated that morning, according to everyone that was there. So there's a theory that maybe he was aiming the plane at his, his wife. Maybe he wanted to take her out. Maybe it was a suicide mission. 
later on, I'm talking with now our keyboard player, Don Airy, and he says, yes, there was struggle because the plane just didn't come in like this all the way. It was like this, struggle going on, and then went in like perpendicular like that when it hit the bus. What I believe happened in the cockpit was Randy trying to avert the plane hitting us straight on. Knowing Randy, that's exactly what he would do. He was not going to sit there and watch this thing happen if he could do something about it. I a thousand percent believe that Randy Rhodes saved everybody's life on that tour bus. Sharon, Ozzy, myself, Tommy Aldridge, and Andrew Swine. Investigators discover that Aycock has been involved in a previous fatal plane crash six years prior, and that he has cocaine in his system the morning of the crash. Despite these findings, and the report of a fight in the cockpit, the official ruling is that the death of Randy Rhodes is an accident. Although Rhodes only records two studio albums with Ozzy, he's forever remembered as one of metal's all-time greats. The fans are not fans of Randy because he was in a plane crash. They're fans of Randy because when they listen to his music for the first time, he has the same effect as he did 40 years ago. That's timeless music. It's not unusual for us.